Hello and welcome to FeatherCast. My name is Rich Bowen. Today I'm speaking with Giles Syrett, who is on the project management committee of the CloudStack project. And we have a number of things to talk about today, but first of all, thank you for joining me. No problem, nice to see you, Rich. We've done a number of interviews in the past about CloudStack, and I think people are generally familiar with, with what it is. Today, we specifically want to talk about your latest release, the 4.14 release. Can you give us an overview of what's new in this release? Yeah, 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 certainly. So 4.14 is a, is a major release for us. Uh, we do two major releases a year, which are our sort of LTS releases. In terms of headline new functionality, uh, First of all, we've got a, a quite significant feature, which is an ingestion tool. We call it a VM ingestion tool. And this is uh, allows uh, organizations to point at an existing VMware virtualized environment and suck that whole environment into a, a, a cloud stack cloud environment. That's been driven a lot. Uh, that's been a, a big collaboration by lots of people in the community, but it's been driven a lot by a lot of people who are sort of reevaluating what they're using, not just for the classic cloud perspective, but what they're using for their, their virtualized orchestration. I mean, I'm not going to go into too much detail about, you know, why, why people are reevaluating VMware, but, you know, one of the key things that, that, that cloud stack gives gives people is the ability to be, to, to be sort of hypervisor agnostic. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing a general trend towards people driving towards uh, KVM. And that gives them a stepping step to do so by bringing things into a cloud stack environment. Other headline features, we've got a, a new backup and recovery framework. Uh, so what, one of the things with cloud stack that as a project we're determined to do is, is to keep our scope pretty limited, right? Is, is to focus on what we do best. And that's the core orchestration around the, the, the virtualized layer. Over the years, we, we have a lot of service provider organizations you use our software. And over the years, the only real backup offering we've had is sort of snapshotting based on the underlying hypervisor. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these organizations want to sell sort of proper backup offerings. So what we decided to do was to create a a pluggable framework where we could plug with any backup provider and then that service provider could then go and sell you know the the branded services if you like of, of, of whatever backup uh, provider they, they want to use so we've created that framework the first provider is is for veeam uh, and that that was just around the the people who are interested in doing this had chosen chosen veeam as as, as their uh, as their platform but we're hoping to see some other backup providers get involved in the mix. So people have got a choice there as well. And the other headline feature is uh, we've launched a thing called the CloudStack Kubernetes service. Uh, now, if you're involved in the CloudStack project, this is, uh, we, we already had a initiative called the, the, the CloudStack container service. And this is a, a pretty big refactor of that and and basically we, we launched the cloud stack container service a couple of years ago and this was about allowing cloud stack to become the, the the infrastructure foundational piece underneath a kubernetes or whatever container as a service yeah. offering uh, like a lot of people at the time as a project we did decided to try and keep that as open as possible so people could use whatever container orchestration they wanted and then it just got to the point six months ago or a year ago where it's like, well, okay, we're going to double down on Kubernetes here. Uh, and, and, you know, an orchestrator like CloudStack, we spend so much time debating, you know, take with hypervisors, for example, we have to find a common feature set across that mm -hmm. set of hypervisors. So CloudStack can support all of those hypervisors. And we saw the same thing or problem challenge, if you like, developing around container orchestration. Mm -hmm. And then somebody called it on the list one day and said, hey, Everybody's using Kubernetes. Like, let's 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 double down on that. But there's some interesting new pieces in that. And then finally, the I suppose the, the biggest thing in the 414 release uh, is we have uh, finally uh, created a new user interface for Apache CloudStack. Uh, we, it was a a project which had its own a SIG, its own special interest group. We called it Project Primate. At the moment, it's sitting in its own uh, its own repo on, on GitHub. And the interesting thing is CloudStack has had, had a UI, I think it was designed in like 2011 or something like that. But it was actually quite a nice UI at the time. Uh, it fitted the use case really well. It was quite innovative at the time. And it's just stuck around. 
unfortunately you know it was a handcrafted url and it's got to the point sometimes people trying to build features in cloud stack it was taking them like 70 percent of their time to actually do the ui bit instead of doing the core bits yeah. uh, and it was starting to date it was getting unmanageable and it's quite interesting actually because a new ui in, in a community like cloud stack where it's made you know we haven't got a big dominant vendor in cloud stack it's mainly from user organizations somebody somebody puts the idea as hey shall we build a new a new ui and everybody goes yeah we really want a new ui and then it's like right well let's get started then and everybody sort of ducks for cover quite quickly because you know none of the companies they're working for are going to be the people who want to stand up and put yeah. 10 engineers on that project for six months and what have you but there's a guy i work with rohit rohit yadav he 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 took it on you I mean, you, you know Rohit yeah, you know, really, yeah. a few times he took it on as an initial r d project and got a sort of sketch of of something there made made some technology decisions and then took that to the list and actually that worked much better in sort of taking uh, an early alpha uh, you know a concept uh, a working prototype there and then we've created the special interest group and it's a big thing for us in cloud stack because we obviously have to deprecate the old ui at some stage because we can't continue to develop functionality in both and a lot of our users use our UI. You know that is yeah. the thing that these big service providers expose out to their their customers. Uh, so there's quite a lot of challenges for those organisations around documentation, around end user training, customer engagement training, all of that sort of stuff. Oh, sure. okay. We had to make the call as a community. Uh, you know, we, if we're going to do this, we've got to do it. We, we, we we're going to have to deprecate. And actually, we're all at during our hackathon at ApacheCon uh, in Vegas in September, uh, we ended up taking a, a it, it went onto the list eventually, but we ended up taking a rough show of hands there and saying, you know, okay, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it, everybody happy that we would need to deprecate the old UI in a, a version or two. And everybody overwhelmingly is, yeah, let's, let's do it. Uh, so yeah, uh, we, we've got the tech preview of that ships with 4.14. Uh, so the idea is we're shipping that preview uh, not recommending it for production environments okay. and the existing user interface is, 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 is still there and still maintained. But the idea of shipping a tech, tech preview is it lets those organizations start to get that familiarity, start to get that planning in place uh, before two versions time when we will be deprecating the old UI. Uh, how, long is, how long is two versions? So we, we release rough, our, our LTS versions are roughly every six months. Okay. Uh, so, so it's about a year. So, so four fourteen that we're, we're just shipping this week has got the tech preview. Our next LTS release, which will be four fifteen, will have uh, the GA version of that new user interface. So it's there, available for production, but also still supported the the old user interface. Mm -hmm. And then the next version after that, likely to be four sixteen, uh, which realistically will be about a year's time. Uh, we, we're going we're gonna to deprecate and remove the code from the old UI. Backing up just a little bit, what what does LTS mean? Okay, so LTS is uh, long term support. Uh, good question, actually. So we we as a community, uh, going back three four years, we had some quite heated debates about our release cycle, uh, and there were there were two very strong, almost polarized schools of thought. Some organizations saw Cloud Stack as the heart of their agility and their ability to, to do things quickly and wanted to release fast, release often. Uh, they were often the organizations who were heavily involved in the project and felt they had a, you know, a sense of control in that project and they were key uh, players in the project. But then you had other organizations who were just like, no, no, we need to know, you know, it takes us 12 months here to do an upgrade and we have to go through this huge change control process because we're financially regulated or, or, or whatever the reason. We can't have you do, we can't have a release every two weeks here, right? We, we need to know if we're going to install some software, what it works with and how long it's going to work for. And if we come to you as a community, how long you're going to talk to us about this version for? Okay, and, and and generally, like most open source communities will talk to anybody about most versions. But when is it reasonable? On you know, somebody comes onto our users mailing list. When is it reasonable to say, look, that version is eight years old? Yeah, <clears throat> get upgraded. So we needed some rules around that. Uh, so we created a, a 
think of it as a policy called LTS, long-term support. And what we do with that is we, we take two releases a year, whatever those is the current release at the time, spend some time uh, polishing in theory, uh, having a quick look from a security perspective, getting feedback in terms of, uh, you know, what's come back onto the list from people who are already using that version in the, in the wild. And we just sort of effectively declare that an LTS release. And then as a community, what we're committing to doing is maintaining that branch for 24 months. 4.13 is our current LTS release. Uh, and we've also just released 4.13.1, which is a maintenance release of 4.13. A non-LTS release, we wouldn't, but we don't do maintenance releases. It just doesn't happen. Now, since that happened and we created that environment where we could have people going as quickly as they want on one side and then the people who just wanted to consume a steady stable software base on the other side since that happened a lot of the folks who wanted the who drove for the fast releases aren't involved in cloudsec anymore so actually we we've, we've now settled down to pretty much just the lts release schedule we have occasionally an interim release that comes in between but pretty much our LTS releases are the CloudStat releases. So, you know, I said there, 4.13, we haven't done a, re a, a major a release since 4.13, and we're now doing 4.14. The point is, if somebody comes along and says, hey, guys, I want us to do a release because I want this new feature really quickly, I want it to be in a release, nobody's going to stop them. Great, great, go and, go and do 4.15. That's not going to be an LTS because we won't hoover up an LTS version until six months time roughly sorry that's a very long-winded uh, <laughs> description that no that's that's really useful because different communities mean different things when they say lts and and that's uh that's very helpful information sure i noticed on cloudstacks twitter uh earlier this week well maybe it was longer ago than that anyway that uh that shape blue is doing a number of webinars around cloudstack yeah um what what do those cover so we as a we as a company, I mean we we as a company work uh, in the CloudStack community. So two two things. So I suppose actually th three three sort of reasons we're doing these webinars is first of all we do as a community we do lots of events. We've got a European user group. There's a couple of user groups happening in the US, one in India, and they've they've all gone off air right because nobody can get together at the yeah. moment. So a lot of that stuff is naturally starting to move online. So one of the webinars is basically what's new in 414 and nobody would bother normally doing a webinar around that because everybody will meet at one of our user groups at some stage and we'll yeah. do a talk about it so so that's been driving it but the other really interesting thing is there is a lot of interest in a lot of the indicators in terms of uh people getting interested in cloud are, are really up at the moment since we've mm -hmm. had this global crisis I don't know exactly why that is, but my guess is that you know service providers are our biggest use case. Roughly 50% of the people who use CloudStat are, are service providers. They're people who are delivering online cloud-based infrastructure as a service to their clients. And I think what's going on is that a lot of those companies that didn't have a true self-service offering and took the decision years ago to say, look, we'll do something, but we don't need to make it fully cloud. We don't we don't need to do that because our cost, we, we're, we're more like a managed service provider. Not We're not an Amazon, right? I think a lot of those companies have suddenly woken up and went, oh, we can't get into our data center. We can't do this. We, and and I, I think that's what's going on. People are realizing, and, and of course, demand from their customers in terms of yes. more infrastructure, quickly, particularly in the SME space, uh, so we've seen that, and therefore we're running a few webinars, which are sort of just classic, basic introduction to CloudStack, because <laughs> we're sending off all these people saying, "Tell us more about CloudStack." So we thought we, we, we'd run some some webinars uh, around that. Hopefully, we'll be back to getting face to face with our community yes. <laughs> at, at some point soon, and we can forget all that, all these webinars. Now, this is slightly off topic, but I wanted to to give a plug to one of your users. I noticed also on Twitter that KDDI is using CloudStack as part of their uh, hosting for the Folding at Home project. So these are it's an exciting project that's allowing people at home to contribute to uh, research around the coronavirus. Can you tell us some more about their project? 
Yeah, I, d I don't know huge details uh, about it, Rich, uh, but I know it's one of a few projects that KDDI or organizations that KDDI, their cloud supports, which is, is re related, to, related to this thing. Uh, and actually, you know, KDDI have done some great stuff with that, but there's a, there's a, I'm sure dozens and dozens of cloud stack users, yeah. i.e. cloud stack operators who are underpinning really essential services at this time. The problem is it, it takes a little while for that information to distill itself back to our project, right? Because KDDI, are, you know, they're doing some great things, but like most service providers, Things are crazy busy for them at the moment, and they want to tell the world. They want to tell the world that they're helping that project. And at some point, they'll say, "Yep, CloudStack's under underpinning that, and, and come and talk to us." But they haven't so far, unfortunately. But I'm hoping retrospectively, we'll see, you know, a whole load of really interesting stories about, you know, what CloudStack was part of during this crisis. Yeah. And, and generally, you know, so many Apache projects are part of the effort right now. It's really yeah. exciting to watch. Yeah. Agreed. And I think it's important, uh, you, you know, those of us who work in tech, our lives, our lives, many of our lives, are professional lives are continuing as, as normal when other people are out saving the world and coming up with vaccines and things. And, you know, I've said to some of the guys that I work with is, you know, you know eventually we, we will figure out that, how important, even in a very, very small way, yeah. our work was. And I'm, you know, I'm sure we'll be retrospectively looking at this for years about how many lines of Apache code contributed to vaccines <laughs> contributed in, in a small way, right? But yes. it's an important part of the part of the call. Well, thanks again, Giles, for for taking time to speak with me. And uh, folks, go out and and try 4.14, and uh, bring that feedback back to the the cloud stack lists so we can make the next version even better. Great, thanks Rich.